We figured we had some cool crash sites already in the game. We wanted to bring a sense of wonder and some mystery. And make the players want to explore, like, oh, what's on the other side of this derelict? In 316, we're adding a whole new series of caterpillar crash sites with exciting new puzzles and awesome environments to explore. The dangers that the players are going to encounter in the new caterpillar crash sites are the laser trip mines. There's a sense of some people have already been there and have rigged the crash sites. Players will have to get really clever to find new ways to approach the caterpillars or find ways to deactivate them. Along with increased danger comes increased rewards. So we really wanted to make use of the new loot system and give a reason to the players to explore these locations. Now that we produced those caterpillar derelicts for 316, that was just the tip of the iceberg. We had this long-term vision of a systemic, persistent kind of derelicts that can go on through the universe. We start looking at what the future could look like in the next few patches. We wanted to introduce the spaceship derelicts into different biomes across the universe. We we'll started with uh, the reclaimer and place it uh, in a Nordic feel. And we explore a uh, corroded version of it, where you start to see the inner structure, but with some plating on top. The spaceship is there for like 20 years and more, and just getting rusty. We have a moon crash site. There's no atmosphere and it's pretty dry and it's not like terrestrial and that was pretty awesome to work on. This spaceship was crashed into a forest. We wanted to explore the avenue of having those trees just really close to the spaceship and also having overgrown vegetation on it. We wanted to feel that spaceship is there for many years and the nature is just taking over. And the next is a communication crash. This spaceship is crashed on the top of a mountain. Those guys there, they're just establishing a communication base where they are at the highest point and they can emit a transmission from there. I had the idea to, to um, to make this spaceship like crashed and it's a swampy biome so the guys just building those tower to get above and to not be dependent of the tide it's adding like a lot of verticality in this and it's pretty cool we all grew up with the same kind of images you can imagine where how why they crashed there. Was it hostile or not? Was it coming out from a fight? And then to imagine the second and the third life of them, it's captivating. It captures something like on an emotional level. As we are always looking on Reddit and reading all your feedback, we can't wait to see what you guys will think about those as we produce them. Hopefully you'll like it as much as we like producing them. Derelicts are a terrific way to explore visual storytelling in Star Citizen and not only make the persistent universe feel more alive and lived in, but provide artists and designers alike opportunities to update and change what would otherwise be a static location into a dynamic and potentially dangerous experience for anyone that enters. 
But we're not done, because what would Inside Star Citizen be without a sprint report? Lopsided, like the overtime rules in professional football. Let's get to it. Let's start things off with some of the continuing work for hospitals and the recent work in progress of Maria Pure of Heart, soon to be found on Hurston in the upcoming Alpha 317. While functionality will be similar to hospitals currently in the burst, you can see here the Hurston family-specific touches that will help you immediately know where you are when you wake up. Now, this hospital already feels like an extension of the CBD players are familiar with. Work is also underway on Mercy Hospital for the once and future Levski, with gray box progress on the lobby, including nurse station, elevators, insurance and pharmacy booths, and more. Let's switch gears now over to mining gadgets, which the EUPU team has now successfully completed the full loop for and is just tweaking and bug fixing ahead of its release in the upcoming Alpha 317. It starts simply with buying a mining gadget at any shop that carries it and bringing it back to your ship to place in its local inventory, in this case, our prospector. Now take off, find yourself a mining deposit, and scan it like normal. Here, we found a node with an instability of 0.91, which doesn't usually make for a great mining experience. Also, keep an eye on that 0.18 resistance. We'll come back to that later. Next, we're gonna pull our mining gadget out of the ship's local inventory and equip it into our personal, because it's time to go out and land on the rock like we're Bruce Willis in Armageddon, or Ben Affleck, or in my case, the crazy Russian. Once we get there, we're going to place our device, in this case, an Okunas model specifically designed to reduce instability and then adjust our waveform accuracy to at least 90% before we activate and leave. Then when we return to the ship and recheck our scanning results, we can see our instability has now been cut down to 0.54 while our resistance has bumped up to a 0.28. Yeah, everything's got a price. It's at this point that you can mine, break apart, and collect like usual. And in many cases, even recollect your mining gadget to be used again in the future. It's a fun new wrinkle that's ready to go for Alpha 317 at the end of this quarter. Meanwhile, the vehicle experience team has been experimenting in the world of maybe kinda can we do this with testing the viability and operability of cluster missiles that you can see here. as well as cluster bombs, where one breaks apart into many, and as you can see here, because of the systemic nature underlying every aspect of Star Citizen, the explosion of one ends up knocking subsequent drops off their targets. It's safe to say more testing and prototyping will be needed before the team considers adding such munitions to the persistent universe proper. Let's go ahead and move inside where it's safer and take a look at recent work on the Drake Vulture, seen here in its final art pass. As a single-player salvage vehicle from Drake Interplanetary, the interior is expectedly sparse and utilitarian, with the bridge seen here, the habitation area, and the processing area. Oh, I almost forgot. Sorry, everyone. Here's the bathroom too. Ooh, is, is, is that soundproofing? We've also got this look at continuing gray box progress in the RSI Scorpius, where one sprint was for completing the main body and carving out space for all the components, 
weapons, lockers, and more, because there's a lot to pack into a ship of this size. And then another sprint where it's a bit further along the gray box phase. And let's not forget the real hotness, its wings fully extended. Nice. Work also continues on the hull A as the team focuses on finalizing more intricate details of the extending and retracting cargo grid in the middle and the engine assembly at the rear. And then the Banu Merchantman continues its early white box explorations for its massive interior, including the engineering section, which should have lots of nice movement to it when it's all said and done. As well as a small brig that's currently located towards the front of the ship that will continue to evolve with more of its trademark Banu curves as white box phase continues. And before we leave ships this week, as some folks may have guessed from a recent newsletter sneak peek, the Drake Corsair has begun its journey through the ship pipeline with this look at early white box progress for its exterior, and we're going to continue to follow along with this progress as this most recent creation by the legendary Jim Martin goes from concept to reality throughout this year. Spacescaping! Now it's been a while since we checked in on the universe's gas cloud tech, and the environment teams recently completed a sprint exploring some Lagrange Point looks for the various planets of the upcoming Pyro system. Each star system, planetary area, and planet itself is designed with a specific color palette in mind at the earliest parts of the process. And some of the coloring you see here may and will change as the lighting passes begin. Additionally, the wrecks you see here are all currently placeholder, as the call has gone out to create more dynamic and in some cases more recognizable debris for the players to explore. Yeah, we're on the road to Pyro this year, and you can expect to see lots more as 2022 progresses. And before we let you go, the teams are following up on the concepts you saw at CitizenCon for Outlaw Space Stations, and moving through White Box Phase designing the variety of them you will encounter scattered throughout the Pyro system. Including some areas that share some assets with the Colonialism Outposts found planet side, and trailing wires throughout while keeping the possibility of AI traversal in mind. You know, some poor engineer is going to get caught up in here the wrong way, and that's how you get Vera at the end of Superman. That was a joke for about 16 of you. Here's another one. This kind of looks like Hassan's office a bit. That was just a joke for Ian Leland. Finally, here's some video follow-up of the continuing white box progress of an exterior combined with the spacecaping you saw before. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the new derelicts in 316.1 are just the next step in a massive new journey towards a more vibrant and dynamic set of historical collisions for players to discover and explore in the future. That the vehicle experience team are going to give the VFX team some high blood pressure as they continue to explore the possibilities cluster weapons bring to the persistent universe. That the Drake Corsair is coming and that Pyro continues to let our artists explore the far reaches of color and general disorderliness. Now, don't forget that Xenothreat is returning once again to the stand system. Be sure you check out the website and social media for all the details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>